Juice Podcast. I'm Gwen Douglas. I'm Emily Harmon. And as you can see, we're in a very cosy space today. Yeah, we're in a different location. We're not at Tycho. We're not. We are at em- Emily's house. <laughs> <laughs> we're in my living room. Yes. <laughs> but we have an autumnal display. Yes. And today we're doing Merlot. Which is, I <laughs> know, oh yeah, that tone of voice sort of sums Says it up. I've actually been dreading this episode a lot. And here we are. And I'm actually excited I'm still to try dreading to, I'm actually still dreading to do it. I'm just like, oh, how am I going to be passionate about this? We don't it. have to be passionate. We can be dispassionate. It's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't all have to be winners. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we each brought something. A Merlot. And as I had never drink Merlot, generally. It's not something I seek out. It's not something we buy at home. So it was a bit of a challenge. Actually, it was for me too, because I, I don't, you know, like, I think when we said we were going to do this episode, I was like, oh, that'll be interesting. And then, <laughs> or maybe it'll push the boat, but it's a bit, it, it is a bit of a challenge actually to, to find one that I feel passionate about. But I think, I think, well, it'll be interesting to try yours. I don't, I don't know yours. The, I've just got back from South Africa uh, a few weeks ago. So I picked this up whilst I was there when we were discussing oh, right. doing Merlot. I knew you'd get something more interesting. That's why I went for a Bordeaux. I've, no, I've never tasted this though. Okay, cool, perfect. I've never so, tasted mine either. <laughs> yeah. Where should we start? I mean, I was a little excited about... The only reason I was excited about mine is when I knew I was going to get a Bordeaux. Because I thought, I'll just get something French and classic... But yeah. then trying to find, yeah, trying to decide between something Pomerol or what I ended up doing, Saint Emilion, was so this is seventy five percent Merlot, twenty four percent Cab Franc, Franc, and one uh, percent Cabernet Sauvignon. Interesting. So actually, that makes me a little excited to try it. Yeah, because you love a bit of Cabernet Franc. You know, I love a little Frankie, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, and it's organic, which I thought was also interesting, certified organic. From uh, Bordeaux. So I thought okay, so what would be interesting? So I feel like it might be an easy. I mean, yeah, it's got a bunch of Cabernet Franc. So this is 2015. Grand Corbet d'Espagne, Grand Cru Classic. And uh, that's about all I know. Okay, let's get stuck in. Oh, right. Oh, sorry. I'm so used to using the Tyke opener. I, I know, this one even has a I, knife on I actually, when I just handed that over to you, I was thinking. Should have see. I didn't bring it with me. Yeah, I should have. Anyway, <laughs> that's the downside of not recording at Tyco. At Tyco, so you get to see me like mangle this with a regular opener where I have no excuse. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> it's yeah. been a long. So I think in terms of in terms of Merlot, I, I mean, I think it probably gets a. I mean, I'm giving it a bit of a bad rap now, but I think it definitely gets a bit of a bad rap. Uh, by a lot of people. Um, and then, myself. Oh no, do you want a tissue? No. Okay. But I might cease and desist and let you finish okay, it I'll before I bleed over. over everything. Okay. It was really um, tight, that capsule. Uh, so, yeah, it is. It's quite a thick uh, piece of metal. It's really tight. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so when, when I think about Merlot, obviously um, it's, quite, it's a great variety that's quite wide, widely planted, particularly in France. It's something like 300,000 hectares of Merlot. It's like one of the most widely planted varietals in France. Mm. Um, so it's quite quick, quick to, like it's quite easy to understand why that is why? because of um, sort of particularly in the southwest, a lot of the bigger bulk wine producers use ah, Merlot, Merlot okay. as well. And I think you know we're all used to seeing in our local pub a cheap yeah, Merlot always, by the yeah. glass. And I might actually take a Kleenex. Okay, I'll be back. Yes. Yeah. So, so you, we see a lot of uh, bigger producers vinifying uh, Bordeaux, vinifying Merlot. I think that's mainly because it's quite, it grows really well. You can get quite a good yield out of out of the grape variety, okay. and in general, it really suits a lot of people's taste because when it's made, let's say at a more bulk level or whatever okay. riper level, it can be uh, very soft, fruity, uh, and quite easy to drink. Okay. You know, I think this is you know cheap. Merlot for a lot of people is sort of great for that sort of housewife level, and I think uh, there we go. Pop that on there. I think um, that's what I kind of associate. <laughs> My <acne> thumbnail. <laughs> oh, <not> God. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're just laughing at Gwen for those that are tuning in. But can't see me. I've got like now a... I've got kitchen roll just wrapped. So it's like very. I mean, I even cut crap. the other bit of my like I cut my whole hand off. That's like a. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> she tattoos better than she opens. Yeah, my God, I've got a few days off after this, so I can like heal. <laughs> But yeah, but I would say, even though it gets a bad rap, and even though I was a little bit unenthusiastic, some of the best wines in the world are made with Merlot. Okay. And, you know, Bordeaux being an, an incredible example of that, some of the most age-worthy wines being uh, made with Merlot, Merlot-dominant blends as well. And we do see it in other places, so France being the main part, right. Italy as well, it's quite popular, yep. see, particularly the northeast around Friuli. Um, Chile, Australia, Chile. Chile. Yeah, that would be the main key air areas, areas, actually. Yeah. I kind of figured you would bring something not French. That's yeah. why I went with the French as a con compare and contrast. But actually, I chose something that's actually a little bit less common to have to have Merlot. But there is a when we get to it, there is a connection actually yeah. to yours and mine. Which oh, okay, explain, cool. Other than the varietal. I mean, this actually smells quite good. It smells really nice. And I'm sure that it's a little bit extra lifted because of the Cab, cab Franc mm -hmm. as well. But quite purple in colour. Actually, a purple ruby. It's difficult to tell with all these autumnal leaves on my table. <laughs> 14% alcohol, but it's quite balanced. I would probably want to eat something. I think thinking. you would. I mean, especially with more full-bodied wines, I don't like to just just. Drink if it's them. not Nebbiolo, I'm not no. interested. It's pretty like crunchy feeling. Yeah, it, it, the tannins feel quite dry, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, there is a Even bit of firmness. Everything else seems quite light, and then it's like. Yeah. So this is quite a typical blend. They're all doing something slightly different. Often Cabernet and Merlot are blended together because they say. Cabernet gives it like a donut shape on your palate. Oh, the funny. mid palate's kind of lacking a bit of fruit. So uh, then the Merlot like, fills the exactly, like yeah. a jelly donut of wine. It is. That's the jam. <laughs> That's yeah. the jam. <laughs> <laughs> jam, you mean jelly, right? That was like yeah, a North exactly. American. Yeah, exactly. That was my North American jelly donut. <laughs> I don't know jam donut doesn't have the same. Uh, jelly. Yeah, but jelly donut, I think of an actual bit of jelly inside. <laughs> you know, like the wobbly ones that you used to make from... Those like, little cubes. Like, yeah, like jello. Yeah. Oh, then you call it. Yeah, see, that doesn't make sense. Jelly and jello. Jello's the brand. Oh, okay. Jello. But okay. everyone calls it jello. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have much to say about it other than that it's like. But no, I do think there's definitely this slightly herbal, um, leafy, in a good way. Oh, yeah, totally leafy. Yeah, a little bit of perfume there, a little bit of violets, but lots mm -hmm. of sort of brambly fruit. Yeah. It is an, an autumn walk. What? An autumn walk. Oh, an au okay. An autumn walk. An autumn walk. <laughs> it is a bit. You're right with the leafy thing. Mm. I guess that also there's like a sort of like a little, maybe it's the leafiness giving it like a little spice at the end, or maybe that's just the alcohol kick that gives it a bit of a... So, yeah, it's full bodied, but it's got nice freshness. Likely it's been acidified because it's Bordeaux, let's be honest. But that sounds slightly judgy, but it's true. Did, what does that mean then? They add something? I think I, I think that well, uh, there are I don't know this producer, so I can't say for sure. But it's, it is quite common in Bordeaux for the wines to be a bit more manipulated. Okay. So different things can be done to increase, decrease, I was reading the concentrate, concentrate, I remember. concentrate your must, concentrate the fruit. I mean, this wasn't down, like a super, it wasn't a super cheap one. I kind of went for something a little mid-range. So it was probably in the like 35 euro range. Okay. It's so, nice though. Yeah. I mean, I'd be happier, if, I think, if we were eating something. Yeah. A little bit of meat on the side. Yeah, I was going to say something. Yeah. Like, stew. Yeah. I think these are wines as well for this time of year. This is what a lot of people want to drink. I do think... Totally. I just find it so hard to connect with it. I feel like that guy from Sideways... Yeah, it have is you seen that? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, I should probably really watch fucking it. Merlot. When he's in the Napa. <laughs> I basically did that one of the days when I was in South Africa as well. With two Merlots at dinner and I was just like... No. Nope. No, yeah, I just said, I'm going to order another bottle. You guys drink that. Yeah, yeah, yeah like you're fine. <laughs> you do you. Yeah, I'm I'll do me. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Maybe that's why... I, like, because I definitely 
not looking for Merlot on a regular basis. And if I see it, it's not, it's like the last thing I'd probably order on mm. the wine list. Not that I hate it, because I would happily, I mean, I'm not that fussy. I'll drink pretty much anything. But yeah, you're right about the connecting to it. Maybe that's what it is. It is sort of like austere in a way that's like, it's not warm. You're not like going back for it. Yeah, it's just, I can't quite put my finger on why. It's a dress up dinner. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. It's a bit stiff. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. But, oh, but in, it's, an in, it's but in its defense though, this is a well-made wine. Oh, perfectly pleasant. If it was on the table, I would drink this and, and not um, refuse, like yeah. even though I was being a bit snobby when I was in South Africa, but I would, I would drink this bottle of wine um, you know, Christmas Day, yeah. roast dinners, that would be a lovely occasion. Like it has a kind of all right bitterness at the end that yeah. I usually like. That's probably yeah. Frankie at play also a little bit. Yeah, that bit of freshness. Yeah. A little bit of tannic grit. When you think stews, you would have you would have something stewed with this. Stewed or like roasted beef, mm. Chateaubriand, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. What about you? It's also like fancy dinner, dress up dinner stuff. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because you're right. I think like a bit of like caramelization on the outside of meat would do well with that little bitter notes and fatty, like a crunchy Yeah, it's very city a... banker lunch, isn't it? Totally. <laughs> yeah. So if you're into bankers... Uh, yeah, get into Merlot. Get into Merlot, you'll find you're yourself. You're destined, there. yeah, you're destined to find a husband. Because I do think like, sometimes if I've asked someone that, that say, makes a, a lot of money, what kind of wines they like to drink, you do hear from, like, I've heard from some people in the past, yeah, I drink, I love Bordeaux. But I have to think that's the last thing that I go to. I'm like, all right, if you can't have Bordeaux, what do you And have? good, like, good old Bordeaux, like, there are some sure. iconic wines that have Merlot in that. I've had some brilliant bottles. I think... I They're just know. not as attainable. Yeah. I think, like, if you're going to drink... I think if you have a lot of money to spend, you can probably drink some of Fab Bordeaux or Merlots mm. from that region. I just don't know if I know which ones they are. So actually, if you've and got I'm drinking, some, and I'm some drinking drink. it because it's easy. Yeah, it's not that. It's actually. But like, like we've had bottles where we're yeah. drinking together, and I'm like, fucking hell, I want to down this because yeah. it's so delicious. Yeah, I'm not having the same. Are you? What about you? I think I do think it's a good well made wine. Yeah, totally, I agree. And I think if we were eating Prince. something, I think I would. I think it would be fruitier. It would have less like curry. Oh, curry. <laughs> Like what, like a rogan? I was a rogan. A rogan. 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 <laughs> I don't know, like yeah, yeah, but not like a spicy, one. sweety, sweet, fragrant, not too spicy. Because this isn't that tannic. No, it, no, no, it could be much, much more. But it isn't. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of want to have duck and sour cherries. But I do feel sorry. I do feel sorry. I'm swallowing mine here. I do feel sorry for um, the grape variety because it does. It get, does get a shitty rap because quite a lot of people. It's been pigeonholed in there. Well, yeah, just it's the underdog to Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah. Everybody thinks Cabernet, it's the Cabernet ugly Sauvignon. Sister. Yeah, it's just like oh, it's the underachiever almost yeah. or the surprise winner when it does come through, because I think Cabernet Sauvignon has become just so famous, like particularly right. in regions like the Napa, where it's you know when I was working in. America last year, everyone would say, Cab is king. And I was like, oh, God, that but do you is think an awful t-shirt waiting to happen. <laughs> but do you think that that's part of the rest of the world trying to live up to Bordeaux's reputation? Probably. It's that, like, if we can do something like Bordeaux, then we've made it. You know, Probably. it's that, like, it's an, e it's an ego thing. Yeah. And it comes to, like, why is everyone making historically Bordeaux blends around the world? Because they want to show that they are as refined as the French or as good as the French or as whatever. Yeah, it's just a, a contest. Yeah, which is too bad because actually it, it would have been nice if because I think there are some nice Chilean Merlots that are much softer, easier to drink. I I'm fruitier. sure I've probably had one. I can't recall. It's been one. ages, but yeah. I think they are much easier to drink. Much well, more and at a cheaper price point, so they'd be totally. great for people to buy from supermarkets. So I do think for people who um, struggle sometimes to know exactly what red wine they want, they want something that's round, fruity, not too dry, not too right. light. Works not too food. oaky and not yeah. too tannic like Cabernet can yeah. sometimes, then Merlot is a great, great variety for them to go for, I think. Yeah. But, um, because it is easy, you know, it's a good, maybe I would say like barbecue picnic wine in terms of Yeah, I think smash the barbecue it back. thing is also a good, like some grilled meat. Yeah, because I think the grilled thing with the charcoal yeah. is a nice match to the sort of crunchiness of the... Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, that was worth a try. I'm yeah, not, it was. I'm not... 
I would, not but you know, like, it's funny, I'm not, um, I probably wouldn't go, I'm going to nip down the shop and get another <laughs> bottle, no. but like, if we sat and drank it at the table, I would find it perfectly fine. Yeah, especially if it was like paired with something that works with it, it would, I actually think I'd be curious to try it. I'll bring it with me. Yeah, yeah. I'm Take going it, and see, you... eat something. Where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> Lucas has got some leftover dinner, so. <laughs> some goose, you mean, you goose mean and red go, cabbage. You mean when you go home? Yes. <laughs> I'll take it with me where I'm going. Yeah. I was like, that's to my house. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm going far away, me and my half drink my love. <laughs> and my acme thumb. <laughs> oh my god. Injuries. It's what we do for you. Alright, don't mind. Get rid of it. <laughs> so, um, I was just travelling, as I said, a few weeks back in, in South Africa. And, um, yeah, we obviously had a plan to do some recording <laughs> of Merlot, so I was like, oh shit, I better get a Merlot. Get a Merlot. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh. Anyway, so it's not so common to see Merlot, but in this region, Stellenbosch is mm -hmm. where it's coming from. Um, very typical to have a bit more, uh, a bit more of those Bordeaux varietals. So you see a bit of Cabernet, you see uh, Cabernet Franc, Merlot as well yeah. too, um, and Syrah actually. So this. The reason why I said this has a connection, so what we're trying, just for the sake of everybody on audio and, and probably on video too, because nobody can zoom in this far, <laughs> this is 2017 Glenelli Glass it's a fun Collection one to say. Merlot. I know. Mate, there's some weird names over there to say. <laughs> there was one that was like, Fer Helehen. And it was like, because it was like Fergalehen. Oh, yeah. But Fer Helehen. And it was like, every time I was like, because it's like some Afrikaans a little bit, Afrikaans which is Dutch, yeah. which is based on Dutch, yeah. So, so it's I was like, just like, oh my god, yeah, yeah. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping you'd bring something from South Africa, yeah. so I'm actually very pleased. Well, there'll to be travel. more stuff to discover over the other podcast. Too. Oh la la. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so this is 100% Merlot. Um, this particular producer, so this was a farm that existed, uh, a farm with vineyards on that apparently existed since like I wrote it down, I think 1684. Oh wow. 1682, almost, <laughs> almost remembered, uh, and then was uh, purchased in 2003 by um, the woman who owned um, Chateau uh, Pichon Longville Comtesse Lalonde. Oh, la very, la. very famous um, producer in the Medoc. Okay. Uh, and bought this estate. So saw some kind of similar, similar, similarity. Similarity. <laughs> I was trying to say similarity and commonality together. Oh god. <laughs> Just didn't work. <laughs> Similarity. Yeah. <laughs> um so, so she, she thought, found, she thought there was a similar uh, climate and it was suited to the varietals and she wanted to make Bordeaux wine. So single right this is a the sort of cheaper range if you like, the glass collection where there's single varietal okay. wines so she makes of Merlot, um or the winemaker makes Merlot Merlot, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, Cabernet Franc and all Syrah, single. all single varietals, and then there's the, blends. Yeah, the, and her the Bordeaux blend called Lady May. Her name's May. Okay. Um, I think it's a blend of all of them, including Syrah, because apparently oh, really? this is a fact that I learned when I was. Oh, old. sometimes you have to go to South Africa know, to find out something more local. I think May might not know. What do you think it is? That it was originally part of the blends and yeah. Bordeaux. I did know this up until the early 1900s. Yeah. A little bit of Northern Rhone Syrah would be blended in for oh, colour goodness. and for fruit, which and, actually would be. Great. Yeah, but probably make the wines more interesting. Much better, yes. <laughs> Let's go back in time, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I wonder also, because I guess then there's this like a little bit of a either colonial or a, like, yeah, where the people went yeah. with the Bordeaux blends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like maybe not only people trying to masquerade as French or impress the French, but also just taking it with them when they went somewhere else. Because mm. everyone loves a bit of home. Yeah. What's well, like that little image of you with the what that you said with the little roots, the little grapevines moving along yeah. with suitcases? <laughs> like, and we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we're going somewhere new. Yeah, because everyone likes something yeah. from home, and we're all guilty of like yeah. enjoying our bits and pieces from back home. And I've seen Italians travel to New Zealand with Italian wine because they were afraid they wouldn't find wine in New Zealand. <laughs> Isn't that mad? I mean, it's mad now because we have the insight and right the power of foresight. It's an incredible thing, isn't it? So I kind of imagine that yeah, if you like see a bit of something that looks like home, that you'd want to give it a shot. Yeah, 
So this smells a lot fruitier, it's still brambly, but creamier. It's quite different, isn't it, as well? Yeah. It's interesting on the back, because I was just looking at this, because there's actually little drawings, which I yeah, think I are the it. tasting notes, which say plum, blackberry, cinnamon, cocoa, mulberry, and, and cherry. cherry. Yeah. It is, does have a gourmand, gourmandise uh, kind of gourmand thing. Yeah, but there is a spiciness there, isn't yeah. there, which is quite, quite nice, actually. It's much more velvety smelling and yeah. like... So fermentation for this wine is done in stainless steel, natural yeasts apparently as well. Um, and then it's in, uh, it goes through malolactic in oak barrels and it's it kept there for around 12 months. Yeah. Creamy smell about it. Mm, it does smell really good. Yeah, two to three weeks maceration on the skin. Oh wow, it's smoky. Mm. Wow, it's really, it's almost like peat It's actually quite smoke. nice. Yeah, it's like peat smoke. It has mm. that like, I agree, Lefroy moment happening. <laughs> we all know those Lefroy moments with wine. Smoky. No, it's weird. It's That's just not what I expected. That's Scott coming out in you, isn't yeah. it? I just didn't it's expect it. It's a Lefroy it moment. I wish I could do that in a Scottish accent. Aye. <laughs> Aye. 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 Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just didn't expect that because it yeah. has such a like desserty. Because like, it's so fruity. Yes, it's leading you to think that it's going to be jammy. like jammy, and then you're like, pow, it's like smoky and peaty. That's actually, actually yeah. quite interesting. And there is a bit of that sweet, a little bit of that sweet spice, maybe mm. cinnamon ish, but I think that's obviously maybe coming from the wood as well. But wow. Mm. I didn't expect that. I guess that's coming from the wood to that aftertaste that's giving me the like. Mm. Scotch it's not bad. No, I think I would also drink this with food. However, yeah, this fourteen point five percent alcohol. Where well, you need something to eat. Yeah, <laughs> you don't feel the burn too much though. No, no, with either of those wines. But you do feel it. This one is like it's Waitier. resonating in your yeah. in your mouth after. As in, it has got. Do you mean it's got a long finish, or you mean it's just like more viscous and thicker? Hmm. It's definitely like the finish is very long because it's still like completely coating my mouth. Like I'm still feeling it not yeah. only on my tongue but the roof of my mouth. And so I bought this one for 180 rand. What does that even mean? <laughs> it means it was about nine pounds. Wow. Wine's very cheap there though. Yeah, yeah. To well, buy in a shop. They yeah. put very small margins on it and very low tax. So I think it's probably. Good value for. Yeah, but I think probably if it came over here. More in the 30. I reckon around 20. They could probably sell it for even a bit more because yeah. it's come from far away. Yeah. And and like I said, the Lady May wine, we had a bottle of that. Now, again, it was the wrong time of night because it was after food and okay. we've been drinking very opulent white wines Then we went to, like, that were very characterful for yeah. the small producers and then we went to sort of Glenelli, Glenelli Lady May after and it was just the wrong context the wrong moment, of the wine yeah. so I didn't really appreciate it. Uh, but it's very apparently quite highly regarded the top oh, one. But yeah. No, this is definitely interesting. I think also And this... definitely an improvement on those like little yes. raspberry jam house mm. wines that you drink that are made with Merlot. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I still think barbecue is probably the way to go. Like this could put up South with... African Brie. Yeah, this this could put up with some And the spices. Yeah. Uh, that's why I say bry, like sometimes they rub the meat that <laughs> They do this really typical thing in South Africa as well, where they make these sausages, which I'm probably going to say wrong, I think it's called borivores, which is like, so they, they get, they kill whatever animal it is, mince up the meat, and they add spices, like basically like all spices, there's cloves, oh, yeah. cinnamon and all this stuff inside. So you have that, like they'll just, and it looks like a snake almost, because it's just, okay. I think, like, like a, a coil kind well, of thing? Well, I think it's just piped into the... Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. But then it's not made into links. It's like one long, one long thing, you, and then it all gets cooked, and then you just break up. You put it on the table, and everyone breaks off pieces. Because that so almost quite sounds convivial. quite East, Eastern European. You see those dishes. I mean, it doesn't. With the it doesn't kind of stay. It actually just looks like a pile of intestines on the plate. Yeah. So it doesn't stay in one perfect. It doesn't stay in a coil. Okay. It's just like this curly sausage. <laughs> it's a bit curly, curly of sausages. Yeah, the intestine of sausages, and then they make a dry version of that, which is called. I think it's called dry verse. Well, something like yeah. that, which just means like dry, <laughs> dry sausage. sausage, yeah, and that's awesome too. But again, lots so of really cloves, oh, very and lots of cinnamon. So this would be great with that. Yeah, yeah, because I think this could really put up with quite a bit of yeah strong flavors. 
Hmm. So I'd be really curious to hear what Merlots you're drinking, because if you've got some that are amazing, please let us know. Let us know. We'd like to try some. Yes. Yeah, if you've got some Merlots that will change our mind about Merlots, we'd love to try it because we'll revisit them on the podcast. Yes. We'll do at some yes. point. I think that would be nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like we said, a uh, little great variety that can go into bulk wine, be really easy to drink, uh, and then actually making some some actually sort of better wines, some serious wines. I mean, we drank those. I drank that really quickly. That's. That, I mean, that's that is what that. That's how I associate that. It's just. I'm not analysing it actually. I was just drinking. drinking. I think for me, it's like pretty full full on. I hadn't eaten dinner yet, so it's it's like. A, both of these are quite big for yeah. not having eaten anything. I've been non-stop eating all day, so... I had a brownie a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, My oh, afternoon this. snack. No, but this was definitely a surprise smell versus taste, yeah. which is really nice. I think that's always like fun when you have an expectation and then it's completely takes you in a different direction. Yeah. Very nice. So, yeah. Well, um, yeah, please stay in touch. Obviously, if you're watching us on um, YouTube, please subscribe, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And um, you if can... you're tuning in on audio, also please subscribe. Subscribe really everywhere. It. Yeah, just, just get on everything and subscribe. Stay with us. We yes. want you to stay with us. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at juice.podcast. Oh, so, yes, and on... Because I don't know the Twitter. I know, you <laughs> always try to get that <laughs> Because she doesn't know tweeting. Is it underscore? Uh, juice underscore podcast on our website, yeah. juice.show. Um, drop us a line, any wine questions, um, any interesting things to keep us up yeah. to date with, we want to hear. Cool. So until next week, I'm Gwen Douglas. I'm Amy Harmon. Cheers! Cheers.